one of these days I'll get that on Hawford. So, <coughs> sorry, sorry, I, I don't know what came over me. I just had this sudden urge to take down on Hawford, but she really should be destroyed. I, dang it, stop it. Sometimes I want to love a series. I really do. But sometimes it's just really hard to get over certain issues in a series. Super Apple Fairy Tale is a series I wanted to love. It's absolutely gorgeous. And while extremely forced, it's an underdog story. And you do really badly want to root for the main character. But therein lies its greatest, biggest stain that unfortunately for me in the end really, really ruined it. But Let's see if I can get my points across in this review of Sugar Apple Fairy Tale, a 12 episode series that aired in the winter 2023 anime season. So let's jump into it. God, I really hate Anne Fulver. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. Stop, Andrew. Sugar Apple Fairy Tale opens up in a world where humans and fairies live side by side for a long time. But at some point, the humans enslave the fairies, which is unfortunately very easy. If a human can take a wing from a fairy, they can then control them by simply crushing the wing itself, it will put the fairy in extreme pain. And so you'll often have a lot of people that are selling fairies and they'll have them in cages with their wing nearby. Well, we follow a girl named Ann Halford and Ann Halford has grown up with her mother who was a sugar confectionist. By taking these sugar apples, they refine it into the sugar in which they can then create confections with it. And this style was actually created by the fairies themselves. It's something that has been told if the fairies eat it, it will extend their lifespan. And her mother always instilled upon her to always respect the fairies. Never look down upon them because they created the thing they love so much. Well, unfortunately, at some point, An's mother dies and she decides to go travel to the kingdom where she can present her confection to the king and become a confectionist. All for the sake of allowing her mother to pass on without worry of An's future. But unfortunately, the journey is going to be dangerous. The road that she takes to get there is infested with bandits and monsters. So she has to hire help, or rather, buy help. She goes to a fairy slave trade where she wants to buy a fairy soldier to protect her. Insert Chalet, a fairy that is so beautiful, most would think that he's just there to service on, but no, he's actually a soldier fairy. And after buying Chalet and they start traveling together, we have this little conflict between On and Chalet. She claims that she wants to be friends with him and doesn't want to order him around, says that when she gets to her destination, she will free him, but at the same time, he doesn't believe her. An claims that she wants to be his friend, but still she carries his wing. Which makes sense because An's afraid of him abandoning her in the middle of this road if she gives him his wing. At some point, An is joined by Jonas, who is her childhood friend, and he goes along with her to the kingdom. And, and then Jonas betrays An and then runs off to the kingdom without her and so on and so forth. Mainly a lot of the story focusing on An trying to get this status as being a confectionist while at the same time dealing with the struggles of procuring resources or dealing with nasty people that want to see her fail. Which gets into my main issue with the show. <laughs> so my thoughts on Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Like I said earlier, let's get, let's, let's get the positives out of the way. Sugar Apple Fairy Tale is a very, very beautiful series. I love the character designs. I love the art style. JC Staff really nailed the visual quality of this series. I also like the fact that you have this kind of contrast of the character designs themselves over like a very fairy tale style background. And there's a lot of emphasis put on the beauty of the wings themselves of these fairies, which I thought they absolutely nailed. When the, when On gets overtaken by the beauty of Chalet's wings, I see it. It looks absolutely beautiful. They really nailed the visual style of the series. Now, the the very few action scenes are very limited on visual style and animation, but it gets the point across. I was very happy visually with this show. The main two characters in On and Chalet are fine characters. I like them. I root for them. Mithril Litapato is one of my favorite characters, partly because Rika Takahashi, but still. <laughs> on Chalet, Mithril Litapato. Love those characters. They're great characters. I rooted for On. I felt bad for her. I, I I struggled with her struggles. Chalet, thank goodness, didn't go the route that I thought they were going to take that character. Early on, I really felt like he was going to become one of those characters of order me around, otherwise I won't touch you. That kind of character, <laughs> which there is a fandom for that type of character. But thankfully, Chalet chilled out. And I really did love his character going forward. He's very gruff. He's very stern. He doesn't trust humans. And again, rather than taking it into what I would call a very fetish style of character, they really kind of grew him into a character that 
honestly made sense to me, and I really respected that. While not a bubbly character, he opens up his heart just enough that it makes sense to me. It's not an overnight, suddenly he turns into an adoring character. And Mithril the Tapato is just fun. I just love his character. He's just a bubbly character, really early on, not wanting to trust anybody. I think even in the end, it feels like he still doesn't trust people. He's a trickster, but at the same time, has another side to him that I really, really adored. I think in the end, Mithril the Tapato became my favorite character of the entire series. Just, just a fun, unknowing character. A character that you just don't really know fully what they're doing, but every time when it counts, Mithril the Pato is there. <laughs> but that's unfortunately where it ends. Outside of those three characters, I hate everybody. And it's for a reason. The main core issue this show has is everything is way too much. On Hallford, like I said, is an underdog. And it's because the writer has some weird interest in making everybody keep on down. Early on, I felt like the direction the writer was going was an idea of Anne Halford being the only one that would treat fairies right. It's not really the case. It more turned it into, unfortunately, everyone besides the fairies that Anne Halford meets are scumbags. Every human in this world is a scumbag. And even characters where it doesn't seem like they're scumbags yet, are probably scumbags. It became so repetitive. From the moment that Jonas betrayed on, I knew from that point on, that's where we're going. Everybody's a scumbag, except for Anne Halford. Even though early on, it almost made me feel like Anne Halford herself thought that she was a scumbag. She didn't want to be praised for helping a fairy because she knew that eventually she's going to have to exploit a fairy. She wasn't a hypocrite, but that's unfortunately where it ended. The show was fine and I liked it, up until the point where Jonas betrays On. And unfortunately, while it does have some great moments, it keeps being pushed down by the same trope. On gets betrayed by everybody. Even at the very end, the last minute of the show, I laughed because it felt like everything was trying to hold On Hoffer back. A carriage, a guy carrying equipment. Everybody wants to keep On Hoffer down. It's too mean that it's comical in the end. And I just got so fatigued by it. At some point, I just got tired of meeting characters because I knew that they were just going to betray on Halford. This writer sucks at writing villains. This writer sucks at writing rivals. This writer sucks at writing conflict because it ultimately always comes down to mean people on Halford's good. Now I'm exaggerating, of course, there's like two or three characters that are not evil. But again, I just don't doubt that they'll eventually become evil. But if I can somehow manage to ignore that annoyance, at its heart, I do like Ann's journey. I like her desire to become a confectionist. I like the struggles of acquiring materials, certain aspects of the political systems and taking certain resources away, the importance of the sugar apple themselves, the concepts, while annoying, of being able to exploit the system in order to keep people away from resources. A lot of that stuff is interesting. But in the end, like I said, the only thing that I really even liked about the show in the end was the visual style and three characters. Which yes, I think they have a great chemistry. Like I said earlier, I love the fact that Chalet became the character that he did. That he went from, yes, a very dangerous individual that could easily leave on to die, to becoming somebody that supports On in his own way. The driving force for On herself in order to create the confections. Yes, her old ways and what she was essentially copying of her mother before creating her own style. And yes, Mithril the Pato and his own way of really kind of just getting out in the open what nobody wants to say. I will admit that in the end, despite my frustrations with this writer and how everybody has to be a villain, I did enjoy this series. I just have to admit that for most of the show, having this nasty nature of every character around on made me roll my eyes. But still, they do have another season of this series coming and I am still looking forward to it. Despite my issues with the series, I still like the core concept here. I do wanna see on's journey going forward. But anyway, rate, that is my review of Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Hopefully I didn't make all the Sugar Apple Fairy Tale fans mad. I think a lot of people kind of agree with me as the show was airing, but 
Anyways, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button down below. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you like most about this series. Does the villain aspect of this series not bother you? I would love to hear from you guys. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you got my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, tips link, super thanks button down below. We also have a membership button down there where you can become a member of the channel. I greatly appreciate it. It supports the channel, and y'all take care.